Today's video is gonna be a bit of a follow-up to a video I put out a while back. I think it was called Inside My Rental Studio. That video actually did pretty well here on YouTube. Um, I'll link it right here if you haven't seen it. In that video, I talked about my whole studio journey, you know, from starting out photographing people in my apartment all the way to landing the space that I'm in now. I rent this space out to other photographers, videographers, just creatives in general. But today's video is a, a little follow-up to that video. We're gonna be talking about the negative side of owning a rental studio. There's a lot more pros than cons, but we're focusing on cons just because there's been a lot of stuff that's happened lately. So I'm kind of inspired to uh, make this video. And hopefully this video can help out anybody that might be thinking of opening a photography studio that they intend to rent out. Or if you currently have one and you're thinking about renting it out, this is just some things to, to keep in mind. It can be expensive getting started. I mean, first you got to find a building. You're going to have a security deposit first month's rent. That's just to, you know, lock down a space to actually rent. Now, after that, of course, you got to get props. Now with that, I would, I would say starting out, don't go crazy. Luckily for me, I had a lot of equipment and a few props already. I've been doing photography for over a decade, so I didn't have to buy a lot of stuff. I already had C stands and tripods, lights, but it still was a little costly. Like I said, with just getting the building, and then doing upgrades, you know, we painted the walls, buying soundproofing for the podcast room that we're in right now. We built a psych wall. We had to order additional backdrop stands, backdrop paper, just, it can, it can add up. Now, most of those major costs you might have factored in to get started, but it's the things you don't think about, like toiletries, cleaning supplies. If you have a psych wall or an infinity wall, you're gonna be constantly buying white paint so that you can put down new coats of paint on the floor and touch up spots that get dirty. I mean, people do the, the craziest things. I mean, I'll go check my psych wall sometimes and I have footprints like up on the side of the wall and I'm like, what? I mean, high, high up. So I'm like, what, how? I don't understand it, but you're gonna be constantly buying paint. You're gonna have to buy backdrop paper. People request different colors sometimes. I keep bottled waters and things like that. So. You know, you're constantly, there's gonna be things that you constantly gotta buy. And then you gotta replace stuff that, that goes missing, right? For example, this is the second Bluetooth speaker that I had to buy. The very first one that I bought, I think we had it here for about two weeks and it went missing. I contacted the client once I went to the photography area and realized that it wasn't there. Of course, he said he didn't take it. Um, I mean, clearly he did, it was, he, Okay, I'll say this. If it wasn't him, it was his guests because when they left, it was gone. And by the way, here's a piece of advice to prevent theft of one of these. I used to just leave it freely in the photography area, but now what I do is I keep it in the storage room. And if anyone asks if I have a Bluetooth speaker, I will go get it, I hand it to them. And before they leave, they have to hand it back to me. Now, the second thing we wanna focus on is the location. You wanna have somewhere that has ample parking. If you don't have ample parking or parking close to your building, that can be a problem. Now, luckily that's not an issue. We have ample parking in the front. Also in the back, we have a garage door at the back that rolls up. So when we have crews with tons of gear, it's easy for them to get in and out. You definitely wanna think about that. Parking can be a problem. I, I remember um, last summer, I had to do a project in Charlotte and I rented a studio. Parking was like super far away from the building. Then you had to get on an elevator and it was like on like the fifth floor. It was, and once you got out the elevator, you had to walk down this long hall and then make another turn. I love the space, but I said I would never book that place again just because of everything you gotta go through to, to, to get into the building. I was pouring down sweat by the time I even got in there. So parking for me is not an issue. Like I said, we're, we're in a business center, but with us being in a business center, we did have an issue arise about two months ago. This is the podcast room slash YouTube studio. Audio is important, right? Now, for some reason, uh, to this day, I don't understand why. The leasing office, out of all the buildings out here, this, this space is huge, right? Out of all the buildings out here, they decided to lease the suite next door to us, they leased it to a church. We would hear kids crying. We would hear people beating on drums, yelling, shouting, crying, just 
going crazy over there. I had no idea that anybody was even over there. The place had been vacant for a few months. I came in one Sunday afternoon for a photo shoot and it sounded like we were part of the service. Like I could hear literally everything that was going on and I was upset to say the least. That following Monday, I contacted the leasing office and you know explained what was going on. He said he didn't have any clue that that's what they were doing, but he said he knew that it was a church. So I'm confused there, but shout out to him. He actually moved them to another building and uh, now we have like an accountant over there. So it's, it's nice and quiet. That could have been a huge problem had they not moved because they were in there like Wednesday night, Friday and Saturday, they'd be like rehearsing. And then Sunday they got service and they had two services. They had a morning service and then an afternoon service. So I had to deal with them for about two weeks before he was able to get them out. But um, location, consider your location, especially if you're gonna have like a recording area in your studio. If it's just photography, um, I guess it's not that big of a deal, but if you know that you're gonna be maybe making like YouTube videos or anything like that, you definitely want to consider your location. So the third con or ugly side of owning a studio is the liability. You gotta have liability insurance in case, you know, a light falls on somebody. You need to have waivers in case, you know, somebody does have an accident or injures themselves. You know, you're clear. In addition to having liability insurance, you wanna have equipment insurance, especially if you're renting out, you know, cameras or lighting, any of these expensive items, if you're renting it out to, you know, let's be honest, these people are strangers for the most part. Um, if you're renting your stuff out, you want to make sure that you're covered just in case somebody drops something, somebody walks off with something. You want to have some type of insurance so you're not stuck paying the full price for these expensive items. And with any type of insurance, that's something you're going to be paying monthly or yearly. So those are other expenses you want to consider if you're going to open a rental studio. So the final thing I want to talk about when it comes to, you know, the dark side of owning a, a rental studio is you know, the damages that can occur. As I said earlier, we have a psych wall. We got that built December of 2022. In that time span, we have had to have it repaired about four times, which two weeks ago was like a major repair. Before it would just be like little small holes or cracks here and there. Um, but we had a major catastrophe happen about two weeks ago. I was really upset about this. Like I said, we've had damage before. After the first time we had an incident, we put signs up that says, you know, do not walk or stand on the curb of the wall. In addition to whenever a guest rents the space, they're verbally told, do not have any guests, you know, back up to the wall or stand on the curb because it can't support that type of weight. About two weeks ago, maybe three, I had a photographer come in. He was here to photograph about five band members. These are all adults, like, 40, 50 plus, right? They should be able to follow simple instructions, but I don't know what happened. They get done with the shoot. All of the band members walk past me. I'm in the podcast room. They're walking all out. You know, we had a great time. Thank you for letting us use the studio. Have a good night. They all leave. The photographer's still in the back packing up. I go back there and as soon as I walk into the room, I see a, a hole that looks like somebody's whole leg went through it. So I immediately get heated. I'm just wondering to myself, when this happened, why did not anybody, the guest or the photographer, nobody came to me and said, yo, we just had an accident. And then on top of that, they all left out and didn't say anything. So I'm questioning the photographer. He's stuttering like porky pig. I'm like, yo, what happened? Uh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I'm upset y'all, like why I oughta? I'm keeping everything professional. I'm keeping my voice from, from raising, but it's, it, it's struggling. It's a struggle. But he's like, you know, the guest said they would take care of it. Uh, it was an accident. They backed up and dude lost his balance. I, I'm looking at him like, what do you mean they're going to take care of it? They all left out of here and didn't say anything. So now it's just me and you. He just keeps repeating himself. Like they, they said they're going to take care of it. So I grab my phone. I call like the, the leader of the band. He's like, oh yeah. The photographer said he was gonna let you know about it. What, what? I'm like, the photographer's right here telling me that you guys said y'all would take care of it. He's, you're telling me that he's gonna take care of it. What's going on here? So then he's like, well, I'm not the one that, that fell into the hole. It was another one of the guys and, and 
let me call him. I'm looking at the photographer like, dude, you're not leaving until we figure out how we gonna take care of this. The band leader calls me back and he says, you know, the other guy said they go half on it. They take care of whatever expenses it was, or they could come in and repair it th themselves. At this point, I'm like, I don't care how it gets fixed. I just need it to get fixed. I got a contractor in, they was able to get it repaired. Like same day I invoiced the band, they took care of it and everything. So to make a long story less long, it got taken care of. I'm glad they handled it like adults uh that could have got messy i didn't want it I, at first i was thinking it was gonna have to go like a legal route i was gonna have to call my lawyer or something but they took care of it they got it fixed and now i am like super particular about people coming in here now i consistently make sure they are not anywhere near the curb then we had another situation with a group that that comes in they've used the studio a lot but lately they've just been getting out of hand. It's a bunch of college students and they cracked the psych wall actually about a week before the band put a big hole in it. They put a crack in it. I didn't notice it until after they were gone. Like I said, they, they've booked here a lot. That was my fault. I got a little comfortable because they've been here a few times. I just never imagined that psych walls would could require so much repair or just you would have to baby your clients so much, but you do because they will absolutely destroy your property. I use this thing all the time. I have friends that come in and shoot all the time. Everything's taken care of, but it's just certain guests. You got to look out for that. And that's the ugliest part. It's just having people in your studio that, that don't respect your space. Another example of damage right now at this exact time, I've got to replace my wall mount for my backdrops. I had a wall mount system that holds four backdrops. I had a group of people come in here. Um, I'm sitting in, in the office. I hear a kaboom. I go to the back. They literally ripped the whole mount out of the wall. I have no idea how that happened. We've had the mount here basically since we opened the studio. It's never been any issues. I, I think the guy was yanking the, the, the chain. But of course he said he doesn't know what happened, but literally ripped it out the wall. There's the studs came out the walls, just big holes. We got to patch that. Just haven't had a chance to get around to that yet. That is the biggest headache, but it is what it is. I'm giving you guys fair warning. I would say that there's way more pros than cons when it comes to having a rental studio, but these are just some of the cons. Like I said, I, I want to make you guys aware of what you might have to face if you decide to open up a rental space. And I just don't hear people talking about this. But if you do want me to make a video, you know, talking about the positive sides, the pros of having a studio space, let me know down in the comment section and I'll make that video in the next couple of weeks. And uh, if you made it this far, like the video, leave me a comment, share, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.